he finds me cooking and he says I, I serve him the food late at around 11 and I go to the bedroom with that food because he has already gone to the bedroom to wait and I go with the food to serve him why are you late and I get slapped with that food and he says sit down and eat it he threw he, he threw food at me and I eat the food from the floor because I don't want to be beaten have you ever eaten food you you can't even sit you can't sleep you can't breathe overfeeding and I am waking up in the morning the, I have that indigestion the, the the indigestion thing because the food did not digest it was too much Allow me to introduce you to Psychex, a trusted partner in mental well-being, offering tailored services for individuals and corporates alike. Remember, you can support any of these women whose stories we continue to share by sponsoring their therapy sessions at Psychex. Psychex provides a range of therapeutic services from licensed therapists to life coaches, all conveniently accessible through a user-friendly web app www.psychex.io The first time he becomes physical, he's even stepping on my head, on, on the floor. This guy is tall. This guy is huge. These ones who do the, the gym, gym stuff, and then he is tall, the six feet ones, and he's stepping on me by, by the head, telling me how swearing how he will kill me before I kill him. And then he, he became like that and I was shocked. For seven years, I had never ever imagined he, he can pinch me. If, if someone told me that, for, for those seven years, if someone told me that he can crease his face, I wouldn't have believed it. It became so bad he became so inhumane that at that moment, and, and you know, he's beating me repeatedly and he's hitting, and you know, those blows, and now I, I am pregnant and I am worried my baby, will my baby survive? So I move on to, there is a bed, I move on to a small coach. In the room we have a small coach. So I sit on that coach, and then he starts fuming and he is pacing in the room and he's breathing in a very weird manner. You, you see, like when he, an animal is irritated in a jungle, he's breathing and pacing and swearing and cursing words and insulting me, telling me how you came into my life, you, you don't know who I am, today you will know who I am, and he's pacing and pacing. He padlocked the door and put the key with him in bed. He picked the mirror and he, he, he crushed that mirror with the hand the glass is cutting him, there is blood all over, and he collects that glass and, and goes with it to the kitchen. There is this thing for pounding garlic. He, he crushes that glass with that thing and crushes it and crushes it and he's cursing and telling me how I, I, the, today I am going to kill you. You don't know who you messed up with. And he's swearing things like that and this is from nowhere. I have never seen anything like that. The door is locked with a padlock. It is raining very heavily outside. And he comes with that, he puts that glass on a plate. If I hear that mouth in this house or a scream, by the time anybody gets to that door, I will feed you with that glass. And he puts it on, on the table. Now because I am helpless, I can't even cry. He doesn't want to hear. So I mum. And then he, he goes to bed. And when he goes to bed, he sleeps. The, the, he, he is bleeding from cutting this, from, from breaking the glass, you know. And he gets into bed like that and there's blood everywhere. In bed, it's, it's dripping. And then he's not even sleeping. He gets up. He, he is worked up. Kind of, he gets in the bathroom puts water in a, in a bucket, comes and pours water on me. So the, the whole room now is full of water. There is glass that has been crushed everywhere and then he is bleeding. And he is cursing and calling me names. I remember him calling me a manaless, a, a daughter. You, you are a daughter of a manaless single mother. You know, 
in 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 those cases i would hear things like you are a daughter of um manale single mother then he gets in bed he he's kind of sleeping i hear him snoring you know i can't scream even if i scream nobody will hear it's raining the door is locked and i hear him snoring and then he wakes up again and he, he starts again with the water with the bucket he pours so the the room is full of water and he does this from 10 it is 10 when i went to bed with a pad from 10 to am the night is not moving and um, he he does that again now it reaches a time now he wanted to have sex with me he comes over and he beats me up again you know he's kicking me in blows and by the time i am crying why are you beating me leave me what what he rips off my clothes he's tearing my clothes and he 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 forces me on the floor that floor that has that water in the glass a mixture of those things he's even holding me with the blood that is oozing on his hands and he he has sex with me and for me when he's tearing these clothes i am holding on hoping maybe by the time he does this he will come down and actually he does then he gets to bed and i i hear him snoring for for some time i'm sitting by the time i'm i'm sitting there two to four it's like years time is not running it's it's like years i'm sitting there then he wakes up again he wants sex again again i am beaten and you know uh, he he's even strangling me with the hands he, he's holding me by the neck and then i'm fighting him off so by the time <coughs> it's morning he wakes up he looks around and i hear you you provoked me don't provoke me again you are the one who caused this and he's looking as if he does not believe he, he like he was not aware he's doing that and he went into the bathroom and for me i was very shocked i was trying to make him explain what is that i am so hurt from the strangulation all those things that he were the beatings i i can't even speak properly and he's like stop it you are the one who provoked me and he kept on accusing me of provoking him and he just washed off and he dressed up and got out he's gone to work so i am left there i look at the mess and i couldn't believe it so what happened to me then was seven years down the line how do i reverse i have never seen anything like that that has happened overnight how do i reverse that back to 7 years you you see you've been there 7 years how do you take that back so i started explaining it i i i started consoling myself in to that situation that maybe he was tired maybe he was stressed up about something so that so that i wipe off the idea of you know you you don't continue with someone who is like that and i made excuses and then i took a shower because now i'm pregnant i want to go and see if my baby is okay but then according to what i had seen that night i had decided that i want to get rid of that baby so i went to the doctor and told him i wanted an abortion <laughs> but the doctor did not okay usually the doctor will not they usually stop you then we talk so after speaking with the doctor i ended up keeping the baby I really wanted this baby. For me when I I was getting into it, 
I wanted the child. I was not getting into it to start getting rid of a child. But what is, what is he doing? <laughs> so my way of dealing with that situation, I went back home. After treatment, I was still on phone. And I, I tried to call his, that, uh, his attention about what happened overnight. Then he told me, he brushed it off and he said, no, uh, today, by the way, don't, I, I want us to sit and talk. Don't cook at home. Prepare yourself, get ready, dress nice. I'm gonna take you out. And then he took me out. He took me out for dinner. When I got to that dinner, I was still having that issue in my mind, but he brushed it off. The dinner happened and there was no talking about it. But even after that, I kept on insisting because I wanted some explanation. Unfortunately, I ended up apologizing for provoking it. So, because I wanted the family, I wanted my baby to have a family. I wanted that child to belong. I wanted us to be okay again, like we were before. So, if it's the provocation, I told him I am sorry. So we went back home, slept, and then it was makeup sex all over again. And he was so loving and he was, th there is no point that I had him discuss the issue or bring it up even after even after the love making so for me that was it now from there things went back to normal it was quiet again i was babe again and I was sweetheart again, and he would come home. I would cook for him as usual, do his things as usual. And my baby now was growing. So I never, I, I didn't hear anything then until one time, even though I, I would see some distant, some kind of distant behavior, the sleeping behavior, because of what happened that night with the glasses and, and the water, I decided never to ask him again. So he would sleep on that side and then I would sleep on the far side of the bed. Now, when it comes to love making, I wouldn't ask again unless he asks, because I noticed when I asked him for love, he brings a fight. So, because for me, I wanted it to work. And I thought, if, if that's the problem, then why provoke someone with such things? And we stayed on until this pregnancy was eight months. When I was eight months pregnant, he comes home one day and we had a discussion about, um, you see the, the room where he was staying was a bachelor's house and there were writings on the wall. So we had a discussion about making the room a nursery for the baby to receive a baby in a good environment. Then we had to paint the house. I asked him for the money. He said he doesn't have money for painting. So. He said, you have the money. Why don't you bring the money we, we paint? So I give, I, I, he asked to make over the room. He asked me for 40K. I gave him 40,000 and it's a bed sitter, just painting. But for me, when he was asking, I thought it was for things. Maybe there will be a coat. Maybe there will be a new mattress or a blanket or something. But when I gave him the money, there is this day that he went with a friend, he's one of his guys who used to be like his friend then. 
they brought paint. I remember telling him I would like to have the room blue and white, light blue and white. Then he said, no, it, I want it green and white. Then I remember telling him because then we are sharing the room and we, we are sharing our baby, we choose. Uh, you choose one color, I choose one color. Then we agreed that he will bring, he, he will do white, I do blue. So the paint will be blue and white. Mind you, he went with a friend. After I gave him the money, he brought the paint green. I tried to ask him, why did you do this? He slapped me. You know, and, and the friend was there. But I, it's okay. Then it's just paint, so I left it at that. <coughs> because I don't want to be beaten. So he, the, the, him and the friend, they start painting so that they don't pay somebody. They start painting the room. And I remember it was left halfway, like one wall. And I am pregnant, so I decided I'm going to be... Um, staying with my friend, the, there is a lady who was with me, the one I, I was with when I was at Hadi, she was still with me. So I said, I'm going to stay at her place before the place is dry of the paint. So I asked him, why are you leaving it halfway? And we are in a hurry, the baby is about, I was eight months pregnant. And he, he said, no, the money is not enough. Now, when the friends had left that evening, he called me by the side to tell me the money was not enough. And I told him, but there is paint. Why don't you finish this first? Then we see where it gets to. Then he said, no, give me the money to go and bring more paint. What? Well, we started arguing, how do I give you money when there is still the paint you've just started, you've not finished it. And when we're arguing, he starts beating me up. You know, in, in the room now. And during this fight, he takes my phone. He knew, because for me, I was open in this relationship. He had my PIN number for M-Pesa, but he wanted my PIN number, my number for the bank. So I told him I cannot give you. So in that argument, I'm not giving you my number. What do you want that money, more money for? And we're arguing like that. And then I am thrown on a bed. And then he takes a pillow. You see, a pillow. And he suffocates me with that pillow. And I remember I felt like I am I am fainting. So when I, I, I my legs are even I'm I'm even kicking my legs. So when I realized that he's serious, this phone that we are fighting over, I just stretched out and gave him the phone, then he left me. So when he let go, I gave him the pin and he withdrew the last money that I had. The last money that I had was 50,000 shillings. That is the money I had left, the, 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 the whole money that I had. And I was keeping it in case of anything for this pregnancy. So when he withdrew the money, he left. And I did not see, like after some time he comes back now, he didn't even paint the house, he left it at that. Every day I'm telling him to finish. He's not saying anything, he's saying, no, I will do it, there is still time. Then I got to nine months, then there were simple arguments here and there and he will not paint it. So it gets to a point where now I'm going to have a baby, like five days or four days later. Then I tell him, we need to be ready. But by the time we are getting there, Nothing is complete, nothing is done, there are no clothes, nothing is, all this time nothing has been done because he has been saying, I will do it, you wait, I'm coming, you wait, I will do it, there is time. And then we, we are now at four days and the house is half painted, no clothes, no nothing. So I come and ask him and then we start arguing. And when we are arguing, it's like he, he now wants to beat me and because the friends were there, they spoke to him and he was, he filmed, he, he, he just filmed out and, and went out furious, picked his clothes actually, and left four days to my labor. And when he went, now the lady told me, no, do nothing, you will still, you have to get that baby. So for me, I just stayed calm. The lady took the paint that was left there and the brush, 
like now he left yesterday the girl the, the following day she's up there with the tables she's painting the room for me this girl went to the market by herself she picked some things you know comes back and cleans them by herself and then that's how it got to now it's today tonight i was supposed to have that labor like tomorrow either tonight or tomorrow somewhere now tonight there so when i am at night waiting um the following day that labor came at five in the morning at five in the morning he he now the lady tells him and he comes back and he pays an uber when the lady called him he, he came he paid an uber to take me to hospital i went to saint mary to get that baby he didn't go with me he paid the uber he remained in the house the lady got in the uber with me i went and i did not notice anything wrong with that it is now that i'm learning that was very wrong you are the father of the child why am i in a hospital with a friend you are not at committed anywhere you are at home so i went in and i got my baby <coughs> he didn't show up until that that day the following day now he comes and the nurses who register they were asking me where is the father of this baby we have not seen anybody here you are alone where is he and and they were asking me and i remember one nurse telling me um when when you register for birth certificate for the child do not write that man how she was telling me how can you give birth to a child alone when he is somewhere in the house he didn't even come here to bring tea he should be the first one to see the baby something he should be excited something like that so she was trying to advise me but for me i was taking it as a joke or a distant joke from a nurse who maybe is feeling like i am alone but then i dismissed that then later after one day he came but this lady was going home bringing clothes bringing tea bringing those things fruits for me until now the following day after one day he came with her and he sees the baby and he's like wow i like the baby i don't know what and he goes and he tattoos the the baby's name on his hand he puts a very big tattoo of the son the son's name I I got discharged from the hospital and when I saw the tattoo I felt like wow he he loves that baby that much to me it was love I start nursing that baby he's still going out to fend for us now I don't have a job I am a new mom there is nobody to help me but I did I I remember I used to cook for myself I would wash for myself because now he's not even allowing anybody to come around he's not helping either and i remember one time there were friends there's these girls that you hang around those people who you hang around as friends this one who was left there with me i remember one day he, he used to insult them when he comes home he will he will find them visiting me because now they no longer see me i've become a mother a wife they come and visit and he's like what are you doing with those prostitutes in this house do you you don't know you are a married woman imagine he would say that when they are seated there i am i am a married woman and i am still hanging with prostitutes and they walked out one by one and this last one she walked out on me and i remember her saying you have to choose between me and your abusive husband i remember fighting her back insulting her back telling her you go and look for your own husband you are jealous of me but he had come and he was insulting her how how i am hanging around with prostitutes remember she's the one who is even taking me to this hospital when he's not there she's the one running on corridors with my documents when he is not there she is the one who is picking babies for me when i am moving from one point to another when he's not there and he comes to the house and calls her a prostitute he 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 wants her gone and she leaves and now i am left there nobody to wash for me nobody to cook for me 
and you still healing from child but it's day one day two day three it's even not not yet a week but i did it then he he, he would come home now no 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 quarrels he's not beating me because i have a baby but i am not being hit physically but now he is distant he he's always on phone he, he arrives home he he holds the baby and then he picks the phone and he will be on that phone watching videos until he sleeps off then he wakes up in the morning and he leaves he leaves some money for food there how will i even go out i'm not healed yet but then i held on in there until i healed and he had become um so toxic that so that neighbors are not even coming to to visit me in, imagine i've had a baby nobody's coming to see my baby but my mother came his sisters came the 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 his mother also came the, the, some some of the family members came but when they bring you home and they are, they have left you home with the baby they leave now when all of them have left he is nowhere to be found when he is found he is chatting and providing uh, 500 bob on the table so i need to get out there i can't even send anybody in the neighborhood they don't want because they they have noticed the way he is behaving he's beating me all the time <sighs> and it became so difficult but i managed with the first baby <coughs> until this time when my baby was around 3 months he 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 comes home and i i you know he used to carry i have a phone there is this time where by because i have a partner you you are open so you put the phone there my phone was not um guarded in any way no you know pin nothing so he would just come and pick the phone and go with it I did not realize that he was taking that phone away from me. He, he would pick it today, then tell me, "No, let me go and use this at work. I have something I want to do. I'll bring it." But then he will bring it. He will come back, he will not give me the phone. He will stay with it next Thursday. That's when he will bring the phone and say, "Your mama is calling." Then I'll be told, "Talk to your mother." And he, will, "Where are you going? Sit there." He, you know, I call my mother and I sit there. What? And that was it. Now he he used to manage the phone. He would give me when when he he wants he wants me to talk to somebody. For example, there is this time my father was calling me. He is late now. May he rest in peace. When he he did what he did uh with my mother my other siblings were so bitter with him they did not even take up his name they changed their names to their mother the, with the mother's id but for me i forgave him i decided to forgive my father because i looked at it when years have gone i have come to terms with what was happening it did not happen to me it happened to my mother so if he does not find grounds with my mother who am i to carry on a burden that is not mine so for me i just decided he is aging he is old now he is sick let me forgive him and i did not even see the need of changing the name that bitterness you know you are bitter because he was abusive yes he did that but what will being bitter do for you it cannot reverse that and i calculated that and i said i forgive him and i maintained his name so when he falls sick this brother of mine who died at a hospital had also forgiven him he is the one who was taking care of him when he was sick he had these blood pressure things so he needs medication every day feeding he has no work he lost his job and all those things so when my brother passed on i had taken over i took over taking care of him so when i'm taking care of him i used to buy his medication i would get him his food when i met this man now who married me from hadi to the bed sitter i could not afford my dad's medicine anymore i could not afford food his food anymore i could not even go i used to go to my mother every month 
I could not even go to my mother anymore. Even if I go, I don't have any money. And that was cut off like that. So this time when he is taking my phone, it happened that one day my dad was looking for me. Because I have gone quiet for a very long time. People are wondering. So my father calls and he picks the phone. And when he picks, I think he told my father something. So my father got angry with me because he, dis he, he thought that I am giving the phone to the man I am with to tell him off. Anyway, when, when he came to passing on, we spoke over that and I explained to him. He forgave me, by the way. When he, he, he passed on, I was with him and he kind of blessed me and even blessed my kids. I took my, my children to him at that time when he was sick. At least for me, I felt like it's, it's a good thing to, find, to look for closure, no matter how minimal. So may he rest in peace. It's different from saying he was, he did, he did. At least for me, I can say I went there when he was sick and we, we spoke. I even asked him questions like, why did you do that? And he would tell me, you know, I don't understand what happened. Now when he is sick and he's old, he would tell me he does not understand what happened. So you mean all those things that you did, all that pain that you caused, all that hurt that you did, all the neglect that you, you, you caused, you do not know what happened? And that was his answer. So sometimes you just have to come to terms with some of these things. So when this man is taking this phone from me, I did not realize that he was trying to cut me off. Not trying, he was cutting me off, literally. Because now everybody would call, he has the phone. Or he is not, the phone, nobody is speaking. Nobody is speaking the phone. When the phone is picked, he is the one. And then he is rude. And then he is texting things back on WhatsApp to people. The people think I am the one and it is a rude text. And then they withdraw. And that is how everybody in my life went away. I am in his house with a baby and him. Nobody calls me, nobody visits me. I used to work, I used to be very active. I don't have any of those things anymore. I can't go to a neighbor. He had a caretaker in the compound who used to call him on phone. When he sees me outside, he calls him, hey, she's here, she's here, she's gossiping on the corridors and he will come home on a motorbike and beat me up. When did you finish the baby? When did you finish raising the baby for you to have time to gossip on corridors? And then he will drive the motorbike back to work. He came home to warn me of gossiping on corridors. And that's how now I was in the confines of his abuse and his torture and his malice. And one day... This phone that he, he came with this phone one day, my phone and his phone, he put them on the table and he sleeps. When he's sleeping, I'm busy doing his things, preparing his things. And then I hear the phone, it's ringing. There is some message there going on, ting, ting, some noise message. I go on that phone around 12 midnight. He's sleeping and with the baby. And I look in there, I see Facebook open. And I look in, he's chatting with a certain girl. And I read these messages. When I read those messages, so this is a girl he met during my pregnancy with this baby somewhere. They met somewhere and he even gifted this girl um, a souvenir cup, those cups that you put coffee on the go. And the girl is bragging with the cup on the chat there telling him how she's holding on it. I you remember, I don't know what, and I was interested in that conversation, and I followed it when he's sleeping, and realized that he was th with this girl when I was pregnant. Okay, that got me worked up, I felt so hurt, and I woke him up. I want him to explain, and then why do you go and use my phone, then you don't even log out, you come and just leave it on the table like that. For me, it was not even that you are with someone. The problem was... How do you use my phone and then come and place it on the table like that? It's my phone, then you just leave those things there. And then he wouldn't have any of that. And I was beaten again at night. 
he beats me up that I should shut up. And I get angry because I keep on arguing because I want him at least to feel sorry, to own up that it is wrong. You used someone's phone and you brought all that kind of dirt into my face through my phone and he wouldn't have any of that. I remember I was beaten so badly and I was thrown out. When I was thrown out, I decided I'm not going to be beaten again. I took my baby and went home to my mother. Now, this is the first time now I'm going home with a baby three months old. I am being beaten. Then he comes and says, oh, I'm sorry. You see, uh, you, you are the one who is provoking me. He tells my mother, if, if she's a good girl, she should not be insulting me. I don't know what, what. And then, because he's saying sorry, he, he just went through the bush like that and he took me back with the kid. When he takes me back, I stay. I am trying to learn how to keep quiet because he's saying I am provoking him. So I would be seeing these things. These messages started coming home and I say nothing because I'll be beaten anyway. At the end of the day, I'm the one who will carry my baby and go on the road when I am not even properly recovered. The baby is not even breastfeeding properly. It's only three months and I am on the road. I am coming back. I am leaving. I am being beaten. So I decided to keep quiet. I wanted to nurse my baby. When I am nursing this baby, he, he has brought me back now. I, I get my fertility, my, my periods back. When my periods come back, that's early. Um, 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 mine do come back early. And then I now know, uh, I, I start talking, talking with him about um, getting a contraceptive. When you deliver, the, the, the hospitals usually give a woman clinics to go and choose a method to, to do family planning. So when I'm discussing this with him, he's so rude about it and he told me, um, my, my, my woman will not use those things. They make the body to get cold. And I was like, what? He, he is reasoning like that. And we, we have a little baby here. And this one, I never believed that that is me. I was in a house um, expecting to make an agreement with a man on birth control, yet I am a biology teacher. So he told me, no, you are not going to use those things. They are not good for women. You are not going to, to I don't know what then uh, in that argument, he says, oh, babe, don't worry. I am going to withdraw. And, you know, men usually, you usually tell women that sometimes, yeah, don't worry, I will withdraw. After all, you know, you are breastfeeding, nothing will happen. And I think if he will withdraw, that's fine. And I let him. And for me, I let that story. And then he withdraws today. He withdraws the second time. Another day he withdraws. Then there is this time that he doesn't withdraw. And this man is huge. You, you know, and in that situation, he's unpushable. Actually, you can't even push him off. And sadly, I did not need um, two of those incidences for me to get pregnant again with a four-month-old baby. So when this baby... The next pregnancy now happens. I don't know how to tell him that I'm pregnant. In fact, he is this cold. He is hostile. How do I even tell him such news? So I keep it to myself and I look for an old friend who at school, when we were in school, I, I heard of how she went to a doctor. I call her. And I told her, for me, I'm naive. I don't even know where to find this doctor. So I tell her, hey, I, this and this has happened. Please help me. This and this. I want to get rid of a baby here. This has happened. Then she tells me, yeah, what you do? Now we are chatting. The, I remember we, we were chatting on phone. When he puts the phone on table, he sleeps. I pick the phone and chat with this girl on how I will get a doctor. Then when I'm chatting with her, she tells me, no, the doctor wants 8,000 shillings. I don't know, for, for some pill a certain pill, I think. I don't know. He's very far away. First of all, the pill was supposed to be sent, I don't know, from where, in a bus. <laughs> the doctor is not in Nairobi. So for me, I'm, I'm making a deal with this girl. And she tells me, no, now where do I get the money? 
I steal his money in the wallet. I steal 5,000 shillings. So I tell the girl I have 5K. So she says, no, it's, it's eight. You find the other three, then you get the medicine. No, it's medicine to get rid of this pregnancy. Then I tell her, no, please pay for me. What would, now when I am arguing for her, she told me, you wait, I will get back to you. I will tell you what happens. Now maybe she will look for the money or talk to the doctor. I put the phone there. Then he wakes up and picks this phone the way he usually picks them and he goes. <laughs> and then he goes to that horse up and someone is chatting about a baby and the pill and the money. And he came home at around nine. He he came with the puts the phone he puts the phone on the table, and this is my husband. This is the father of my kids. I see him. I shiver, because I know he is about to lose trouble. He's about to start fighting me. He's about to start kicking me and slapping me for no valid reason. So, as usual, I am. I am at a corner somewhere waiting. Now I'm worried that he has seen the message and he says a child that is in his father's house, someone who has a husband, how does she go out looking for a abortion? I want you to explain to me how, if that is my baby, how is it being aborted? And at nine, I get slapped. I get beaten. Whose baby are you going to abort? And I am thrown into the bathroom. He locks that bathroom and leaves me there until I tell him whose baby is that? Who did I sleep with? When I went loitering around claiming I'm going to my mother, I went to sleep with men there. Now I am coming to abort babies in his house. The baby is crying. I'm hearing, shut up. He's shouting at a little baby, shut up. Remember, I'm supposed to be breastfeeding a four-month-old. And he locked me in the bathroom. He, he was waking up. He, he has this thing with water in the bucket. He, he wakes up in the middle of the night, comes to the bathroom, puts water in a bucket and pours water on me. Remember, in the bathroom, there's nowhere to sleep. I'm seated on a toilet bowl. Since that time when he locked me up there, the floor is so cold, so I'm sitting on a toilet bowl, and he comes and pours water on me. Then when he pours water on me, he closes the bathroom again and goes back to bed until you tell me whose pregnancy that is. And I'm crying. I'm trying to explain it is yours. It is, this and this happened. I don't know what, what he doesn't want to hear. And I slept in that bathroom. In the morning, he comes. Hey, babe, how are you? Are you okay? This baby, if, if I come back to this house and I don't find that pregnancy, you have to disappear and hide very far away where I will never find you. So that is a go ahead that you should keep the pregnancy. And he leaves for work. So this man, from there, he comes. I keep quiet. Now I am struggling with my pregnancy and my little one. I, the, the, it, it is now growing. The doctors advised me I can just breastfeed both babies. I breastfeed and then I, I nurture the, the one I'm carrying, but I have to just sit down and feed. You, you just feed, just feed so that you can catch up. But now, why are you feeding? Because this man is the provider. Then he has started withdrawing. The moment that I've gotten pregnant now, he kind of withdrew. The other one, he, he fed me at least. But this one now, he is not even there. He comes home with some, he, he feeds on some um, kinyiji, what do we, traditional vegetables. He brings them at nine. That's what he eats, those bitter leaf ones. Then I start making those at nine. I have not eaten since morning. He will bring the vegetables I start picking them, removing them, the way they take time, you know. And then maybe I'm finishing to cook at around 11. And, and then there, there is this time when I, I serve him the food late at around 11. And I go to the bedroom with that food because he has already gone to the bedroom to wait. And I go with the food to serve him. Why are you late? 
and I get slapped with that food and he says sit down and eat it he threw he, he threw food at me and then because who who eats at this hour he wakes up now goes to the kitchen gets rem the the remaining food there he brings it he says eat it i eat that too because uh people eat at this hour you will eat it have you ever eaten food you you can't even sit you can't sleep you can't breathe over feeding and i am waking up in the morning the, i have that indigestion the, the the indigestion thing because the food did not digest it was too much and then he wakes up as if nothing happened and he goes so i carry on with this pregnancy and this i have a helpless baby i am getting heavy i can't even go to a neighbor i just sit there i can't even go to the shop how do i carry this one who do i leave it with so he is the one who will bring whatever he brings at nine when he arrives sometimes he does not even come at nine it's midnight so i'm just there at his mercy i wait nobody calls people don't even know i am pregnant and there is this time that he he is beating me i don't know what was the fight about i carry my small baby again and i am hiding the pregnancy i go to a friend somewhere far away and i stay with the friend for one week i'm telling her i came to visit and i don't want people to know that i'm pregnant even her she doesn't know i'm hiding it and i have a little one and then after staying there one week he calls me he says babe you know i love you why are you loitering around you are the one who is going to disturb people there you just come back and because of that struggle and i don't want people to know i'm pregnant again i carry the babies i leave my friend's house i go back so the number of times that i leave i go with the babies i run away and then i pick the babies and come back because he has called me babe sweetheart is countless and he is doing these evil things these bad things and then he calls me sweetheart you know i love you you know i chose you i already chose you you look around you 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 know i chose you what is it what, what are you going to look for there can you imagine a man telling you i already chose you it he, he made a choice he he used to tell me that and when i hear that for me it's true he has chosen when you look around like the the facebook girl i was being told you see a woman on phone and a woman in my house who who is in in a better place and for me i would look around and it's true i am in the house that one is on phone so those are the kinds of kind of arguments that he would make to keep me there to corner me around when it is painful on this side he is you know soothing it on this side so that now you are just Uh, going round and round a merry go round of pain and this man kept me there with those kinds of struggles with my pregnancy and with a helpless baby and it it started escalating to irritation he was so irritated for no good reason arguments from nowhere he does not talk to me normally anymore he shouts at me uh fighting like he 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 would start a fight from nowhere one minute i am in on a dining table eating then he 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 starts a fight from there or another minute i am in bed we are in bed making love he starts fighting from there so it became so hard for me to connect between imagine this is somebody you are making love to or you are making love with and then he starts a fight in between making love and fighting you 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 can't bring those two things together at all but that is when he starts a fight and and he will do it like that so by the time you are trying to connect the two it's 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 already escalated to an abusive situation to a very stressful situation and i at a certain point i get this this pregnancy now if, if i spill water if he comes home and finds spilled water i get beaten if he finds a towel in the wrong place or a cloth in the wrong place i get beaten so it was like that day in day out with my pregnancy and remember i could not even go to anybody for help no phone no nothing 
even he himself he doesn't have friends nobody shows up at your door you are just in there so it's it's the the, the toilet the bed sitter it's the pot the toilet the bed sitter the you bath you nurse the baby you breastfeed you have sex you wake up you wash clothes while standing up on a table you you put clothes on a table to wash because you're heavy and that was it for quite some time until i am eight months pregnant again with this second baby there is this day we had an argument uh, no, not an argument actually he, wh when there were all these difficulties and in the middle of this abusive behavior and violent behavior he had reached a point whereby he had promised me in december we usually travel you go home i go home or we go home together we will not go this december because we are expecting a, another baby on top of a baby uh, what will happen i will take you for shopping on 24th and then we will celebrate our Christmas here on 25th as a family. We just stay so that we save money. And for me, I, I had a very reasoning, a reasoning man who is preparing. And I noted that. So we get to December 24th, 2019. December 24th, 2019, I am eight months pregnant. I wake up in the morning. It was on a Saturday. I go and prepare his breakfast as usual. Now, the, this, this bed sitter we had moved into a, uh, I don't know, it's a studio or a what, <laughs> for 8,000. We left the one for everything. We have now another one that has a small kitchenette. Then there is a door with a very big room on the back there. So I wake up, I go into this small room, it's where now my kitchen is, and I have a small table and his seat where I, feel I serve his food from, like my dining table now. So I cook here, I serve him here, but now that's where we sit and we sleep. So I get out, I leave him sleeping, I prepare his breakfast. I know today he's taking me out for shopping for this baby that we are ex expecting. When he wakes up, he joins me in the kitchen, I serve him the tea, and I say, hey, good morning, babe, how are you? You greet him. I greet him as usual, the way I'm used to. And he responds, and then I say, hey, are, we, are you still taking me out for shopping so that I can get ready? And then I hear, bitch, ninyamazie, bitch, ninyamazie. That's for, bitch, keep quiet, shut up, stop disturbing me. I cannot come into this house and, and get peace. I can't come into this house and rest. And he started cursing and quarreling again. And all of a sudden, the tea I served, he threw that tea at me. What? And I'm like, now why are you beating me? You know, you, you are there. Why are you beating me? I was just asking a question. And he stands up now, slaps. Shut up. I told you to keep quiet. Stop asking me things that, uh, things that I already know. And he starts slapping me. And now that is beating me in the morning on, on that 24th. So what happened? I ran away from that. Now I don't know. The main door, he wouldn't even let me. Because it's still locked. We have not opened it. So I, I ran back into the room. And when I'm running in there, he follows me. And when he follows me, he comes in and he, you know, he's slapping. There is a seat somewhere. I'm on that small sofa and he slaps me from there. And I, I notice this is a fight. I am heavy. Why are you beating me? And I'm pregnant. I get on top of the sofa. I jump onto the bed where the baby is sleeping. So we were sharing the bed. So the, I jump over and then now he, I saw him grab, you know, a baseball bat. There was a baseball bat hanged on the wall. It was a decoration for our baby's bath. He had decorated it with the baby's name. It was on the wall. So he grabs that. And I've already jumped on the bed. And then he steps on the seat and follows me on the bed. And he stands on that bed straight. And, you know, I have reached the headboard. I have nowhere else to run to. And I, I was grabbed back. Now I am lying on my back. And this pregnancy, I am eight months pregnant. And he assaulted me. He, he put his foot here. I am lying on my back and he, steps, he, he stepped on my face with his foot. 